Hi and welcome to the channel. This is Graham Sampton. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, today we're going to talk about reincarnation, soul passage and transmigration. Now you have to wonder what happened, why we uh, decided to stop thinking for ourselves and let all the religious leaders of the time det to, like, determine every aspect of our life. Um, they've changed a few things, rewrote a few paragraphs here and there in an effort to change the view from the soul that learns and grows over many lifetimes to a soul that only has one lifetime to achieve all that is pure and true. So, by converting the masses with the notion of one life, this has led to total control of us all for so long. To this day, there's not some form of religious ideology involved with the government and the military the education system, the legal system, so many different nations and religions all running with similar mechanisms of control. So what really happened to our original beliefs and the knowledge that has been buried by many layers of dirt and rock over thousands of years? And I mean literally buried. <laughs> um, about 3600 years ago a very large media or asteroid hit the earth. It devastated everything. It took everything away. But out of that destruction, a few remaining humans rebuilt civilization. And through some of our history and knowledge, even though some of our history and knowledge was lost at that time, we managed to repopulate the world again, building upon the resources, knowledge, and recovering mostly what was lost. Uh, and then about 12,000 years ago, another catastrophe occurred in the form of a great flood. That really did devastate us almost completely again. But again we crawled out of the devastation and set about repopulating the world. But so much has been lost this time that we had no chance of recovery. The truth is, we're still recovering. But the time has come and the knowledge that was once lost is being recovered again. Of course, this will still take time, but within the next hundred years, we should be on top again. This, though, leads to a very disturbing question, though. Will we make it past the 12,000 year threshold and advance into a level one race? At the moment, we're about a 0.8 reaching for a 0.9 on the scale. We're getting close, um, and we can't be misled now by ideo ideology that doesn't allow us to understand that we are not able to reach a level of transition from this place in one lifetime. When we look back in time, we find evidence of the truth. For example, St. Clements of Alexandra in uh, 215 CE, in his uh, exorations to the pagans, stated that beliefs in the soul pre-existence, we were in being long before the foundations of the world, we existed in the eye of God, for it is our destiny to live in Him. We are the reasonable creatures of the Divine Word, therefore we have existed from the beginning. Now uh, Plato says in, uh, back in 348 BCE, says, Know that if you become worse, you will get the worse souls, if you, if you, or if better, to the better, and in every succession of life and death, you will do and suffer what life may fitly suffer at the hands of life. Now, but who can understand Plato? <laughs> um, Platonus, in uh, 270 CE, in the second Enad, writes that reincarnation is a dogma recognized throughout antiquity. The soul ex expirates its sins in the darkness of the infernal regions and afterwards passes into new bodies there to undergo new trials. Um, back in 1657, the rabbi um, Manasseh ben Israel, I probably got that wrong, but it's my bad, um, the revered theologian and English statesman said that reincarnation was a fundamental point of their religion. We are therefore duty bound to obey and accept this dogma with acclamation as the truth of it has been incontestably demonstrated by the Zohar and all the books of the Kabbalists. 
And in the Orthodox, transmigration, the belief that the soul passes through successive stages and that the soul brings with it uh, knowledge and understanding that has been accumulated until it has reached a level where it is able to overcome the earthly ties that were holding it there are uh, subdued, then it ascends to heaven. Now in the Hindus, the Bhagavad Gita, the holy text of the Hindus observes that as the dweller in the body experiences childhood, youth, old age, so passes be on to another, he onto another body. Now, the Buddha, back in uh, 483 BCE, believed in the karmic laws that gripped and held those who did not understand the true nature of life and death. But because the universe and reality are always in a state of flux, forever changing and reshaping themselves, there can be no single unique soul of any individual that is caught up in the cycle of death and rebirth. The various components that make up a human being are in the perpetual processes of change, but always held by the laws of karma, which determine the nature of a person's rebirth. So, in just about every religion from mainstream to pagan and Gnostic, if you go back far enough you find all the evidence of reincarnation, soul passage and transmigration. And from the research, we have a soul or spirit that is elementary and primordial. It is beginningless, immortal, infinite and indestructible. When we look deeply at the constructs of the soul, what emerges out of contemplation is that all things are the mind. Because in the beginning, there was only the word as thought, and the thought is of the mind. And we are what we think. But as humans, we tend to have to have some sort of structure so, uh, to what we really are, a soul or spirit that looks like us. But as such, we don't need to have a form when we are not mortal anymore, but we can't comprehend a bodiless us. But the truth is, our true form is incomprehensible to us. At this level of awareness, all I can say to that is, beware of the illusion of matter and for the grasping and attachment you have to this. Okay, now with that in mind, knowing that you have many lifetimes to achieve transcendence and that you will achieve it eventually, as you have endless time to do so, and that you don't have to do it in one lifetime, or that this is the only life you'll ever live, allows us to reach a deeper understanding of compassion, loving kindness and equanimity towards us all, as we're all reaching for the same goal. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show. This has been Graham Sampton. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video coming soon on the channel.